This video is about all of our lines, vertical, horizontal, and oblique. And we're going to start off with the equation of a line that's a vertical line in rectangular coordinates. So in other words, in rectangular coordinates, if I wanted to draw a vertical line, I would have x equals a. And that can be any number a. In other words, we realize that that can be to the, to the right, to the left, but we know it's a vertical line um, passing through a on the x-axis. But we also know that if I wanted to convert this to polar coordinates, that x is equal to r cosine of theta. And if I wanted to graph it in polar form, I would have to isolate the r. And so how do I isolate the r? r is multiplied by cosine of theta. So by taking a and dividing it by the cosine of theta, I can have a vertical line. So the polar form can either be written as r cosine theta equals a or r equals a divided by cosine of theta. Now also remember that a is the distance, a is the distance to the pole. And if a is positive, then it is to the right of the pole, and if A is negative, it is to the left of the pole. Okay? So a vertical line would be given, for an example, we might have R equals 3 divided by the cosine of theta, and that would be a vertical line passing through 3 to the right of the pole, uh, passing through the polar axis, three to the right of the pole, okay? A horizontal line, a horizontal line would, in rectangular form, would be y equals a. And if I wanted to convert that to polar, then I would remember that y equals r sine of theta, equals a, and if I wanted r by itself, that would be a divided by sine of theta. So the polar form can either be r sine of theta equals a, or it could be r equals a divided by sine of theta. And so a is the distance to the pole, and if a is positive, your line will be above the pole, and if A is negative, it will be below the pole. And an example equation, so this was an example of vertical, an example of linear would be R equals negative 2 over sine of theta. Okay, a over sine of theta, negative 2 over sine of theta. And so this particular line would be a horizontal line passing through 2 below the pole. We'll come back and graph those. Now, oblique lines are a little more difficult to, to explain, and we cannot actually graph them on a graphing calculator. If we are looking at an oblique line, for example, y equals the square root of 3x, and you know that an oblique line is a line that doesn't have a, a slope of 0 or undefined, but has another slope. It's just a normal y equals mx plus b format. In this particular line, remember that if I were to divide both sides by x, because if x is not 0, so y is divided by x equals root 3, then I can replace y divided by x with tangent of theta. And if tangent of theta is root 3, then theta is the inverse tangent of root 3, and theta is pi over 3. Well, what that means is this is actually the oblique line uh, uh, that goes through the angle pi over 3. So this one was actually easier to graph on paper, so I'm going to show you how I would do that. We would just draw our polar graphing paper. 
we would find our line, which is at pi over 3, and we draw a line through the origin. It also happens to be the same location as 4 pi over 3, and that's okay. It goes on in both directions. It is the oblique line that passes through the origin with an angle of pi over 3. So anytime you see theta equals, um, for example, if I had, and this, this, by the way, was an example, but if I had theta equals negative 2 pi over 3, then I would go to negative 2 pi over 3 and just draw my oblique line through the origin at that angle. So if we do a couple of examples, and I asked you to graph them, let's say, for example, that I had problem A, r equals 7 divided by sine of theta. Now, I know that if it's divided by sine of theta, then I am looking at a horizontal line. Go back and look at your notes. We're looking at a horizontal line. And where does that line exist? That line exists 7 above the pole. So I would have 7 circles. 4, 5, 6, 7, and it would just simply be the horizontal line that passes through the pi over 2 axis at 7. For example, B, if I had r cosine of theta, sorry, that shouldn't have been an equal sign there, r cosine of theta equals negative 3, then to graph it, r equals negative 3 divided by cosine of theta, I know that it's going to be a vertical line. It's going to have three circles on my polar graph, but it's going to be to the left of the pole. So it would be a vertical line that passes through pi 3, or 0, negative 3, passing through that point. The last one is a different format, but it's the same type of equation. r equals 2 secant of theta. Well, we know that secant of theta is 1 over cosine. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times 1 over cosine of theta, which is 2 over cosine of theta. So once again, I am looking at a vertical line, this time to the right of the pole. I would have two circles, and it would pass through 0, 2, and make a vertical line. And notice that's 0 degrees with a radius of 2. The last example is theta equals 5 pi over 6, and that's all that it says. It doesn't have r. There is a way to graph these on a graphing calculator, but it's very complicated, so I'm not going to show you that. We would simply just come through and have any given circle. We just need one circle. Find 5 pi over 6 on that circle. Here's where 5 pi over 6 is on a circle, and we draw it through the pole and there's the graph of theta equals 5 pi over 6.